Good morning from the Golf Industry Show here in San Diego, California. The 2019 Golf Industry Show here in San Diego. I'm on the GCSA TV live stage here, brought to us by Lebanon Turf. And I'm joined with my wonderful friends from GCSA's Government Relations, Mike Lee, Bob Hyland, Hava McKeel. We're going to get a whole half an hour to talk about government and politics and the role that the GCSA is playing in this industry, really leading a lot of it with the National Golf, their involvement in National Golf Day and the events. And we're going to get to that at the very end. Hava, I see that I know everybody on the staff this year has been encouraged to wear the ribbons of service, right? And it's so telling. You see so many double digit uh, figure people, which to me must indicate a place that's really fun to work. So mm -hmm. I know we were talking off air. It's been as exciting a time to work at GCSA as you can remember. But I guess I'd like to start out with you just taking the people who can't be here and the people here through the evolution of where we are now with government relations and advocacy. I started, Frank, working for GCSAA in 1998. I'm a 22-year veteran of GCSAA. <laughs> um, I have seen it all. I've seen us in the heyday of golf mm -hmm. with a staff of 130. Uh, I've seen it when I've, and, and five members of the Government Affairs Department. And then I've been there when we bottomed out, when the economy dropped mm -hmm. nationwide and in golf. And I was running the department by myself, and it was a lonely place. <laughs> That's exactly right. But the passion for representing this industry has never subsided. No, no. I love working for golf course superintendents. They're professional land managers. We love golf courses in our communities. It gets us, our team, out of bed every day. Yeah. We're so passionate about it. But it's a very important message, and it's one I've stole from you since we've been <laughs> yakking on our podcast that we've done in the past, but is that idea that these are prof this is professional land management. However you look at it, these are people who are managing the land where there's resources and inputs being used that in many cases are heavily regulated. Other places don't, are not as regulated, but it costs a fair amount of money to implement. So our role in sort of understanding that process is really critical that right. we play like farmers and forest managers, people, you know, forest fires that come under scrutiny for, are you managing the forest right? Is that why we're having these uh, forest fires? We are those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And I think what you do with the variety of things that give us a voice outside of this industry is really critical. So now you have some help with that. Before we get to the help, what are the priorities for the group now as it's constituted for this year? You know, at, at a real high level, we continue to be storytellers. Mm. We have such good stories to tell <laughs> you do. about taking care of the environment mm -hmm. and about golf as a significant industry in this mm -hmm. country with its economic, the economic yeah. engine it is, and the amazing charitable donations that come through this yeah. sport. Yeah. Of course. And we just love day to day getting out there and telling that story. It's amazing how misunderstood this industry is by the public, by the media, the yeah. naysayers. Well, and then it must make it hard because you have an agenda of the issues that we care about, right? The issues that we think are important to sustaining an industry that matters to society in some way. And so you have to tell that story first to get over some of the, maybe I always say, adults oftentimes are more difficult to educate because you spend, the, if everybody's got a whiteboard on the front of their head, <laughs> you have to spend a fair amount of time erasing some things, you know, maybe that's not what it is anymore. And you have to write something right. new. And that takes time to happen before you can get the, to the substantive right. conversation that moves the issues down the road. So do you want to talk a little bit about telling the story or would you like to switch to talking about some of those goals now? For the well, group? yeah, I was just going to say, nobody cares about what our issues no, are exactly right. if they don't care about the game of golf. And so we have to cross that bridge first. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's a key element of our priority issues agenda. Once we cross that bridge, and we can get past those perception or misperceptions, then we can go talk to members of, the, of Congress or state lawmakers or our city council members about the issues that our industry cares about, like water, water conservation, yeah. labor and immigration. Where are we gonna get our workers from? Yeah, and you know, these are not 
these are volatile issues. Yeah. Water in the West, you live and die as a politician <laughs> with water issues in the West. And in fact, some of our members, I think, have joined water boards. Oh, yes. Uh, All up and years. down California. Right. We're here right. in the great city of right. San Diego. But it, it is tough, though. If, if we're reliant then on getting people that really have some passion for golf, <laughs> that number of people, number one, isn't growing. Number two is characterized as, you know, well, what kind of people, are, you know, it, it, it the we know that the majority of golf continues to be public. We know that there is diversity in golf, mm -hmm. but you know the perceptions of golf and having to overcome some of those things in the world we live in today around volatile issues like water and labor. Oh God, do we have to talk about labor? We, we can't <laughs> even go anywhere near any discussion about the politics of labor, but we can say this, when you give our members, in my opinion, tools that make it easy to hire people that you are legally allowed to hire and employ in the United States of America. These guys are going to do it all day long. They, there doesn't appear to me ever to be any subversion in mind here. Tell us what the rules are. Right. Keep them so that people can regularly flow in and we can have what we believe to be in a healthy American immigration economy. And then let us hire them right. We can take the politics out of it by saying how we make it simple. Right. And I, I don't know. They don't love golf. A lot of people don't care about golf. How no, do no, they don't. That? Some people don't care about golf. There's others that do. But my, ent my entire career, the best part of my career is changing that perception mm. of golf. And I don't know that our members recognize, appreciate, and understand how, much, how easy that is actually to do. I mean, I travel all over the country at speaking engagements throughout the year. And I was on a trip not too long ago where I was in a cab, in a taxi cab with a woman who made a disparaging remark about the golf course where we, we were driving by on my way to the speaking event. Huh. And I said, oh really? What do you know about the game of golf? Huh. And we got into this amazing conversation hmm. about superintendents using the least amount of inputs yeah. to create the best playing conditions, yeah. unlike others in the country. Yes. And I and I was able to share with her how they are professional land managers. By the end of that cab ride, when she dropped me off, she had a complete different viewpoint and said, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, she has friends and family yes, that's right. and co-workers yes. and it spreads. So so this is so what you're saying is in many ways everybody has to be an advocate Everyone. for these things when they see those misperceptions. Uh, begin to call them out, right? Exactly. So, so th that's, that's you know, to me, you went from a high level to actually sort of one person at a time yeah. sort of story we have to tell. Um, let's pivot to the way we're going to tell that story in these avenues if we should. Should well, we do that now? Yeah, and I, you know, I'll just mention that we had Ambassador Academy yesterday uh, with our grassroots ambassadors. So and was I won't it a full house, my... I hope? Well, we did. We had a we good did. crowd. We had a good crowd. But I shared with them at the end of that ambassador training that they need to see the big picture. Nobody is going to speak up for golf unless we do. And our members are the ones that I trust right. to go there with science, data, and the stories of professional land management. Mm. And this department's got some pretty big dreams. Good. We've got some pretty big <laughs> ideas about where we want to go moving forward. <laughs> it can only help our efforts if every, not just grassroots ambassadors, but every, anyone that cares about the game of golf is an ambassador for golf, it's going to help with these legislative ideas that we've got rolled up our sleeves. If Bob, when Bob goes in to talk to members of House and Senate Ag Committees or the different members of Congress, if those members of Congress have already been connected in a very positive way by members of this association. Right. That's what we're trying to do yeah, through that ambassador program. That's right, and, and I think this is what I guess um, is, is what's evolved over time, and that is the, the demands of uh, making sure the people who represent us understand the industries that they represent and don't work on bias and prejudice and maybe information that they got from an agenda-based uh, mm -hmm. approach. Uh, and of course it's hard, you know, we're in golf. So it's hard not to think we're not biased as well. So <laughs> that's why it's important to have yeah. the science and the support of science, which has its own problems this, these days. And I believe partly what I do is important because as a scientist, I'm trying to continue to say, listen, 
we can know this to some degree. I don't, I don't put a capital T truth on it, yeah. but I'm willing to call it truth to, that we can agree on. And right. that's got to be the basis of what we're doing. So let's talk about how you have to do that first to lay the groundwork, I'm assuming, for the roles that the ambassadors then play as our guy in Washington. That's exactly right. I got to tell you, we're all facing the same environment that folks see on the TV, government shutdowns, a lot of partisan name calling. And a lot of people look at me and say, how do you get anything accomplished on behalf of golf when you're dealing in such a toxic environment? And the answer is we go with the fundamentals. We go with the environmental and economic impact the game has in each and every congressional district and state. We make sure, Frank, that they know that golf plays a role no matter they, whether they play the game or not and how they're, the people in their uh, district and state live. That's right. So I come in with that argument, and we get stuff done because of it. Yeah, I mean, to me, those are two issues. How are you going to argue those things? <laughs> First of all, you want to protect the environment, so to me, it tells me you're aware of what the risks are of what you're doing as a professional land manager. And the second is, we need a vibrant economy to sustain a, the lifestyle that maybe we don't overconsume, but that we can sustain ourselves on. And they're going to pay attention to people who can get jobs, things that contribute to the local economy. And this is where being tied to golf is such an important component to it, right? Because when we're going to have the uh, PGA Championship at, at, at uh, my you know, home place, Beth Page State mm -hmm. Park on Long Island soon, and the economic impact of that event on Long Island is in the, is in the nine figures, right? right. It's close yeah. to it's nine figures for what it has in mm -hmm. a 50 mile radius. I can't believe that's a hard story to tell. And we're, you know, the reason, you know, I'm ha also proud to be part of the New York State Park System, a publicly funded government organization delivering this particular uh, ve venue. We, we, that's part of the story we have to tell because we're managing that landscape that is what everybody enjoys. Yep. And that can't be a hard sell. Forget what you see on TV when you see the, these media stars come up, people at each party that want to talk. It, it's always been true that all politics is local. Hmm. And when we come in there, I connect the dots from what they're doing in D.C. Mm -hmm. down to the local level, down to the golf course. Mm -hmm. Whether it's labor or water, as Hava mentioned, mm -hmm. we make sure that they know that these golf courses don't magically become the way they are. That's it right. takes a lot of time and effort and money That's to right. get them to the conditions well, that, that our no members Well, and there's no benefit to overdoing it. This is what I always <laughs> find. You know, I teach horticulture at Cornell and have to listen to a lot of people talk about food and farming. Like, oh, yeah, those farmers throwing at me. Okay. I can tell you industrial agriculture has issues, right? But right. in general, nobody's making money by continuing to <laughs> apply things and use things. And, you know, let's just use we're, we're local here in California. Let's talk about what people are paying for water in Southern California. Right. $100,000 a month is not unheard of on golf yeah. courses in this market. Mm -hmm. A million dollars a year is therefore not unheard of. If you do 50,000 rounds, do the math. That's 20 bucks a round just to get the place open <laughs> to have water. I mean, I don't, I don't think sometimes people appreciate the, the sort of the lack of incentive we have to overuse these things. Yeah. And what inherently should be part of the fabric is that we're stewards. Does that resonate with the people you interact with in this? I don't like toxic. I don't like you like that word. I don't like that word toxic <laughs> environment. I think we're just really polarized right now. Doesn't it feel like we're just a very polarized society? And there's a lot of ways to do that that there weren't before. Yeah, I do agree. I think we are polarized, but stuff's getting done in Washington, and that's the message I, I bring home to the members. That's right. That the government is moving forward on issues, and if we're not at the table, we're on the menu. So we always make sure that we make sure golf's voice is being heard. Do you, you want to talk about specific uh, initiatives in the environmental economic area that are going to be important moving forward? Uh, the waters of the United States. We talk about it many years. We've got great news. The, the administration is moving forward on a replacement rule that would help clarify our activities as golf course superintendents to make sure we're not breaking the law when it comes to putting down inputs on our properties or moving dirt. Okay. Simple, basic clarity that we're looking forward to seeing. In the existing rule. The clarity of the issues in the existing rule, not the expansion of the rule that they were considering a few right. years ago. Better rule, clear rule, clean water. Who we're, doesn't want that? We're going to be speaking on that this year. We'd like to see that move forward. A lot of our courses could have been, could have been put out of business 
because of the lack of clarity of whether a tributary, a wetland nearby, right. was That's part right. of the watershed, you part know, of the area. But this is part of the pull and tug of what makes good policy, right? Mm -hmm. The Water Act was written in the 70s. They finally got around to figuring out maybe we can get it going on these other lands as well. And then you get uh, what could be described as a very advocacy EPA under the, in the Obama administration. And, you know, you could have opinions on that either way. They got their hand slapped by the GAO over the years. We've talked about this. But what to me ultimately it comes to, now you have a, a philosophy of smaller government. Maybe, or clearer government, government that's not maybe an activist government, but wants to enforce the rules that, that are in place. Everybody, no one's going to disagree, clarity to a rule is bad. Right. Everybody wants clarity to these rules. That's the problem because then it gets made political. Exactly. If there's not clarity, yeah. it gets thrown into a football. I can interpret it this way, you can interpret it that way. Let's get some work, let's get some agreement on what the heck's a body of water. <laughs> Can we get an agreement on what's a body of water and where we need to be careful? <laughs> right. We have to be mindful of the fact that golf courses do serve as enormous stormwater management facilities. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at Chicago, how they're directing water in these park districts into these mm -hmm. golf courses. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a really important aspect of it. Frank, I'd the be BMPs, remiss. of course, help with this a big way. I'm sure you're Ooh. shilling the BMPs around Washington. I was just gonna We're say, shilling them around New York as much as we can. Our BMP program is a model for the country. We make sure that the folks in Washington know the role that we're playing is stewards. Yeah. Because when they come in as a one-size-fits-all mentality, right. it doesn't take into account the role that the golf course superintendent plays right. on his or her course. That's right. We and love we, the BMP initiative, Frank. Yeah. I mean, wherever I go around the country talking to superintendents about, you have to understand, the Government Affairs <laughs> Department, we're the messengers. That's right. But we have to have a message. Mm -hmm. And the environmental programs and the BMP initiative is that message. And wherever we've taken those BMPs and have a solid program at the state level, that has helped us significantly exactly right. in the advocacy space. That's right. and, and again, and we're doing our level best right. this year and in the future to help members understand that connection. Uh, it is critical. It is absolutely, as someone who's been married up to this for the last six, seven years, um, I can tell you that codifying these standards is critical. If you look at other industries, particularly agriculture, and you look at the gap standards that farmers have to follow to be able to sell produce in a commercial environment, right? Those are the kinds of things we're we're experiencing the same low level uh, adoption uptake or the you know uptake of these practices, implementing them on the golf course. We're starting to get to the point where we're going to get to a point. Right now, it's still slow, I believe, as as we raise awareness is so critical. Eventually, it's just going to go oh, yeah. like that. Right. And then we're going to be able to say, listen, you know those gap standards? When you go to a politician, you know those gap standards? We have these things, mm -hmm. too. And not only are they water quality protection for all the things we want, they're pollinator protections. We've right. expanded mm -hmm. ours, and you, the ones mm -hmm. that the GCSA have done, they're really BMPs for environmental stewardship, comprehensive environmental management plans mm -hmm. that then get localized. Right now you're getting to the point, Brian Unruh was telling me, it's mm -hmm. going to be to the point where you can clone your state's version, bring it to your facility, and of course there's going to be a lot of training around that. And mm -hmm. I hope that's a lot of what you're selling out there in Washington, how we're, they're bringing it down to every operation is going to have this. Yeah. It is, it is, and, and we do that with the help of our grassroots ambassadors as well. When, they, when we come to Washington for National Golf Day, a lot of them are there helping tell the story as well. So you did a perfect job. Did you see how he did that? He's, he's just, a natural. He's just, I don't even about know that what you need me here for. I'm not even sure what I'm doing here anymore. That's perfect, Bob. So, Mike, we've had conversations before about the Grassroots Ambassador Program, and I'll just start by saying, when I paid attention to what you're training these guys on, my sense is that these are skills that if you're a golf course superintendent, these are skills you need to function effectively in any kind of facility operation politics or you know, interactions with your superiors and people that are using your facility. These skills you're teaching, to me, are very intentional in how they can be used. So that's the grassroots program. You're the head of it. My feeling is they're great skills. Right. Tell us a little bit about uh, how long the initiative's been going. And of course, I want to hear about these ambassador sort of boot camp things that you do. Sure. The uh, Grassroots Ambassador Program at GCSAA is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, it started back in 2014. In the summer of 2014, we had our first class of Grassroots Ambassadors that numbered about 50. I mean, it started with a boom, uh, and, wow. and, and we were moving along pretty quickly. 
Uh, it's grown to about 350 grassroots ambassadors now. So the goal was the House number, right? I That's thought right. I remember the goal is the House number. Well, we have 535 members of Congress total, House right. and Senate combined. House and Senate, right. And so uh, we are well on our way to pairing each and every member of Congress with a superintendent or an assistant superintendent mm -hmm. across the country. So as I mentioned, we're at about 350. We've had a few folks sign up this week at GIS. Great. Um, so we're very excited to keep that going. We think we're going to reach that 535 mark by 2020. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're aggressive with our recruiting throughout the year. We love to get more and more people involved. So they're at the table advocating, talking about uh, the positive stories in golf course management. That, that requires skill. It does. There's a skill to doing it, right? This is not, you know, Bill Murray hacking it around the golf club in <laughs> Chicago. This is high-level conversation where you're now the storyteller, right? If I was to use your analogy that you were telling a story here, these become the storyteller. It takes some skill, but I think, Michael, you would agree with me that you're just telling your story. Isn't that what you shared at boot camp yesterday? That's exactly right. You know, um, our members come from very diverse backgrounds. Right. They, they get into the industry in different ways. Mm -hmm. And you know we found that in advocacy, the best way to succeed in connecting with lawmakers and regulators mm -hmm. is through telling your personal story. Exactly. So we're more than happy to provide data, research, statistics, sort of a platform. Mm -hmm. But when you build a personal message on top of all that, that's what really sticks uh, with those so in government. So let me ask you, I, you said one thing I want to get back to is you said assistants are doing this. And I, I want to keep that in the parking lot for now. But <laughs> what, what, um, what, are the, what are the things you think the superintendents who have been doing the grassroots program for a while, what are the parts of the stories that they tell that you think resonate the most with uh, the members of Congress that they have to tell them, right? You're giving them data and you're telling them to make a story, but what do you think are parts of the story that you find resonates the most with the people you, you know, not sure. the ambassador, but the, uh, that the ambassador gives? Sure. Um, you mentioned the agriculture industry and the mm -hmm. forestry industry mm -hmm. from the start. You know, they're certainly at the table in a lot of these regulatory discussions right. and legislative discussions. Right. There's no reason golf shouldn't be there as well. But a lot of times lawmakers don't think about golf. They don't right. think about the way waters of the U.S. might impact the golf industry. It's pretty mm -hmm. clear how it impacts the ag industry. But we got to be there to tell golf story. And I think ambassadors have done a great job of that. Um, especially when you start conveying the economic impact mm -hmm. of the golf industries we've talked a little bit about. Right. Doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. Right. Economic impact is important in every congressional district in the country. Right. You start talking about some of those numbers that we're an $84 billion industry um, employing over 2 million people yeah. in the golf industry and lawmakers really start to go, wow, didn't realize the impact that golf has. So part of the story is making sure the legislators, those local folks or, or senators, are aware of the impact of this industry on their constituents. What I like about that is it keeps us out of the crisis mode. One of the things I think we, I don't like about sometimes what happens is there's, there's WOTUS. Remember a couple of years ago, oh, they're gonna change it. And we start running around and you gotta tell your story in the midst of the crisis. Instead of saying, here's the story, you know, I'm gonna see you once a year, twice a year. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna remind you of these things. I don't want anything. I just want you to be aware that when you make a decision that could potentially impact us, and here are those decisions that could do that, you're mindful of the fact of the impact it could have locally. And this speaks directly to your point about professional development. That is a big part of joining the ambassador program and learning to talk about mm -hmm. um, advocacy and compliance. Right. Um, you know, we, we, we see that no matter your, whether you're talking to club members, your Greens committee, right. your city council, or your members of Congress, right. You got to have a little bit of, you know, practice, a little bit of training, That's which right. we provide That's through right. the Grassroots Ambassador Academy. It doesn't come natural. Sometimes. We're all in sales in some regard or the other. That's exactly and right. That's, and that's what advocacy is, too. Yeah. And we'd love to see the development of our ambassadors in that exactly way. Exactly right. Well, the big sell and the big mass is the golf day. So Ooh. let's wrap it up today with National Golf Day. This is something that we all come together. We, everybody plays a part in it, right? I was just poking my head and I think I saw my pal Steve Mona sitting over there. I know he's had some involvement in the past, but his career's uh, moving on as well. I, I don't know if he'll be continued to be involved, but we are involved. Mm -hmm. Do we have dates and things? Are we going to core airify the National Mall again? Everybody, the, the Twitter day is always a fun day to yeah. watch social media when we see everybody in the vests and on the tractors. Uh, you guys have really, uh, and Mike Stackowitz, I think, has been oh. really, uh, don't we love Mike? Yes, we just love that guy. And he, yeah. he's a let me tell you something. That guy's a big ambassador in the government Huge. for turf, and he's just so thoughtful about the way he approaches it. So let me shut up. Golf Day, National Golf Day. Well, it's coming up May 1. So all, May 1. everyone out there, so we got the May, date. 1. May 1. Uh, the Community Service Project's April 30th. 
And um, so you got to come in a day early. You know, the second we walk away from that event, we're already dreaming about how to make it bigger and better the next okay, year. Okay, so what are we doing? We got this big year? dreams. So drones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this year for the community service project, we are going to take it to the other side of the mall. So those that have been there before are familiar with us doing our turf restoration projects between the U.S. Capitol building and mm -hmm. 14th Street. Mm -hmm. This year, we're going to do uh, projects between the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. And so we're flipping over to the west side of the mall, nice. and we're going to have, instead of 20 teams, we're going to have about five or six big teams, and they're going to all be monument-based. So we'll have a Lincoln Memorial team, a reflecting pool team, a Vietnam Veterans Memorial team, a Martin Luther King Memorial team, and a Washington Monument team. And there's all sorts of amazing projects that need to be done around each of those individual monuments. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we're just <laughs> excited about this. Well, so. not only does it draw attention, right, <laughs> but you're doing good. I know the I know the landscape industry has a day where they go to Arlington National and, right? and do some maintenance down there. We should be sharing our expertise, and if it's an opportunity for people to see us and get a story told about, mm -hmm. hey, what the heck are you doing? Oh, I'm a governor. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, huh. and next thing you know, you're telling the story. So the next day we come together. How does that work the next day? Well, we have our lobby day on Capitol Hill. Everybody needs to right now go online to We Are Golf and uh, the We Are Golf website right. and register for the event. When you're on that website, you can let us know, do you want to be a part of Lobby Day? So we actually hire a firm that helps us pull this Lobby Day off seamlessly. Excellent. So when you sign up, you're going to be partnered with all the other members of the Golf Allied organizations in your state. Right. And you're going to be going around Capitol Hill as a state delegation, so you're never by yourself. That's right. And we, in advance of National Golf Day, we determine what the issues are that we're going to lobby on, focus on that day. Yeah. And then we're going to get some training yeah. by a webinar before we even head to Washington, yeah. and then we do training on site and the day know, before. And, and, you know, to me, part of the deal is now we're with the other parts of golf, the yep. allied golf mm -hmm. members, part, you know, the sticks and balls and mm -hmm. rules and regs and resorts and yep. all the industries that are involved. So we're, you know, I would imagine a lot of these organizations look to us for leadership on a number of these issues for the entire game. Oh, right? absolutely. You say, oh, we, you know, it's like we throw around, we lead the game. Lead. Okay, wait. We don't lead the game. The players lead the game. Somebody else will lead the game. <laughs> but I think in these environments, politics, there is a part where we can say we lead the game on some things, especially oh, environmental. We bring 50, the GCSA brings about 55% of attendees to this event. And every year, we're the largest delegation that goes there. Excellent. We have a very strong voice. But having said that, we truly want all of the golf allied organizations to have a high level of representation. Excellent. We need the whole facility represented there. That's exactly right. So one more time as we wrap up, see how quick 30 minutes went? <laughs> one more time as we wrap up, May Day, May 1. May 1. Right now, if you're interested, you can go to wearegolf.org. Yep. Right? And sign up. Yep. And it's a commitment that's going to involve two days and some really great work the day before. Yep. I just love to hear we're deploying on the monuments. That was a great idea to do that. So and I can't wait like to, to hear. We'd like to see you there this year. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe yeah. May 1st, I could. I would love that. I actually have never gone, so it could I be know. cool to go. That could be great fun. <laughs> you might not want to put any implements in my hand. Though. Well, listen, thank you all for joining me. Appreciate the conversation. Um, we're here on GCSA TV live stage, brought to you by Lebanon Turf. We're live at the Golf Industry Show in our second sunny day in Southern California. We're very happy to have that. Thank you all for taking the time to do it. Really great to chat with you. I'm Frank Rossi, and we'll be right back.